Hi there, you're on Gossip Says channel. Enjoy watching, subscribe and like it. It's growing our community. Story 1. I've been a horrible employee and it makes me unbearably anxious. But I'm too ashamed to let anyone in my personal life know. I'm not really sure what's going on. I never used to be like this. I just don't answer emails. Even follow-up emails and follow-ups to those. Even when they say, I really need a response to this. I just don't. I also ignore IMs. If I even see them. Some days I don't even open MS Teams. Or I set my status to away, even if I'm there because I'm terrified of people pinging me to ask about the things I still haven't done. Sometimes I wander away from my laptop for hours at a time or even all afternoon. I tell myself I'll log back on and catch up after I eat dinner. But I never do. I've missed every deadline I had in the past six months. I know it isn't okay. I know I'm making my co-workers jobs much harder and holding up everyone else's work. I'm deeply ashamed but can't seem to make myself stop behaving like this. It becomes cyclical. Once I've ignored something long enough, the thought of having to confront that fact fills me with such intense dread and anxiety that I completely shut down and can't do anything at all, even unrelated tasks. So it festers and gets worse and worse and worse. This morning my supervisor called me for I guess a come to Jesus talk. Nothing he said was untrue. I've been totally unresponsive to customers, to project managers, and even to him. It takes me weeks to do work that should take hours. I no-show meetings, and he has to remind me constantly about things like submitting my timesheet and taking mandatory training by the deadline. He was as kind as possible about it. I knew that call was coming. I had to take a Xanax to make myself get on the call instead of checking out again and going a do -l -l. Then I had to drink a bunch of coffee because I barely slept last night from my anxiety. I don't think you're supposed to mix benzos and caffeine, but clearly I'm beyond worrying much about that. I also haven't been talking to my therapist or my psychiatrist about this. My psych asks me every appointment how work is, and I hedge and just say my performance could be better. Understatement of the year. I obviously need to come clean. If this is actually fixable with pills, which I doubt but maybe, I need to get over myself and do that. My therapist would want to know too. I've been focusing on the problems in my personal life, but my professional life is on fire and I need to prioritize it for a little while. Anyway, I know what needs to be done. I need to suck it up, go back through all my unread emails from the past six months, apologize profusely and get people the work they asked for, and become highly responsive and reachable going forward. I know this situation isn't catastrophic. I've tanked my job, but I'm not on a PIP yet, and while I'll definitely get a negative performance review, I've had good to great performance reviews for a decade before this. This will pass. Five years from now, this will be a distant memory of that time. I tried my damnedest to get fired but miraculously didn't. My co-workers will forgive me. Or they won't. That's okay too. I don't deserve their goodwill or benefit of the doubt anymore and I won't expect it ever again. It could have been worse. I could have tanked my relationship with my amazing boyfriend instead of my job. I am terrified he'll find out about this and completely lose respect for me, but that's another story. I could have driven away all my friends and family by lashing out at them, or just going MIA. I have an uncle who did that once, sent everyone an email saying he needed space, fucked off out of the country, and nobody saw or heard from him for seven years. That sounds pretty good to me sometimes, but I haven't done it. I could have physically attempted to destroy myself instead of professionally. The thought has crossed my mind a bunch. Alcohol, cigarettes, and excessive use of my prescribed psych meds are all right there. But I didn't do that. Disordered eating is right there. And I've done that before. But I didn't do that this time either. I could have landed myself in the hospital or worse. But I didn't. So it's going to be okay. This is fixable, and I will fix it. Just going to take another half a Gazanax, pour myself some more cold brew, and draft the next extremely apologetic email. Story 2. I, F30, am still in love with my partner, and 31 of 8 years, but our relationship isn't working anymore and need some guidance on how to extract myself. I have been with my partner for 8 years. We live together in the house he owns outright, 
and split all expenses 50-50s. Some potentially relevant context. We have always had a rocky relationship with a lot of arguing. Five years and I was diagnosed with severe ADHD which explained a lot. In the past year, I've also been diagnosed with a couple of disabilities, which has been a difficult time for us with a lot of feelings of grief on my part. When we met I was not long out of being a homeless teen due to domestic violence at home and finally getting my life vaguely on track. My partner lost his father when he was six years old and inherited a large sum of money in his mid-twenties that I was unaware of for several years of us being together. After he revealed this, he bought a house outright and I was happy to sign a document essentially saying if our relationship dissolved at any point, I'd have no claim on any of his assets. We never ended up going forward with the document, but I believe it's important to mention that at no point have I ever had any desire to get my hands on anything his father left to him. I was with him for who he was not what he had. He also has consistently earned at least double my salary. We argue near constantly, it seems these days about every little thing. He's more conservative leaning and a big capitalist. I'm more liberal leaning and think our current system is exploitative and lets down the most vulnerable. We argue about housework and the mental load, with me doing near 100% of the housework and he does any DIY projects and home improvement. We argue about our pets. He will hit our dog when he misbehaves because he needs to learn. And I grew up in an abusive household, so I absolutely hate the association between violence and discipline. He doesn't like when my cat sits on his expensive car and on one occasion tried to stuff his head down the toilet to teach him not to sit on cars anymore. He repeatedly violates my boundaries and tells me that me saying no is not a good enough reason and he'll stop doing something when I'm able to give a good reason. We have a poor sex life due to repeated boundary violations making me wary and it being hard to want to be intimate with somebody who talks down to you and criticizes constantly. One Christmas he revealed he'd been keeping a list of every time we'd been intimate so he could show me how little I put out so to speak. He's constantly short-tempered, can be incredibly cruel with the things he says, and recently has accused me of taking advantage of his wealth despite the fact that I pay 50% of everything and am essentially a free housekeeper. I found myself shrinking around him. I'm not especially happy and I used to be so excited to see him get home now I just feel lonely and cold and sad most of the time. I'm seeing the therapist and trying to work through all my shit, but he won't do the same, just turns to beer instead. His own mother this past weekend recommended that I leave him, that he can be charming but also cruel, and revealed his last relationship dissolved because his ex felt he was controlling. My closest friends tell me that they were alarmed by the way I started to talk about myself within 12 weeks of being with him, that they didn't recognize the mouse spouting poison about themselves that they saw now when I used to be so bubbly and happy and friendly. My main problem is I still love him. The man he shows me glimpses of sometimes is the one I fell in love with, and he's generous and charming and kind and funny, and I feel like that man has been taken over by one that I don't recognize. We have many mutual friends and the thought of leaving him and having to explain to them why it makes me feel awful. I don't want to color their view of him or potentially lose them, but I'm not sure that I can do this anymore. I want a chance to feel happy again, to figure out who I am underneath all this depression. Every time I psych myself up to tell him this isn't working anymore, he does something kind, and I remember the man I met all those years ago and forget the man who tried to waterboard my cat and makes me cry multiple times a week. This isn't working, but I feel stuck here, clinging on to who he used to be. I don't know what to do, how do you leave someone you love that you've built a whole life with even if you know it's for the best? Story 3. Update. My 25F. Boyfriend, 33M. Suddenly told me he wants to establish traditional gender roles once we get married. I luckily don't live with him or have any shared assets. He also did explicitly say that he expects me to continue working, so I guess he wanted the best of both worlds. And before we started dating, I was hesitant due to our age gap. I have heard of horror stories, so I have been very careful about power dynamics. But he was amazing for the last three years, so I did put my defenses down eventually. My friends and family also liked him. They always said we genuinely seemed happy together and complimented each other well. On to what happened. He came over to my house the night I posted on Reddit 
which isn't unusual. We spend most nights together after work. I knew I had to break up, but didn't know how to yet. I was still debating if I should ask him more questions or just end it. And if I end it, do I tell him everything or keep it concise? Luckily, he did not suspect anything so far, so it bought me some time to figure out my next step, I thought. As soon as he came in though, he tried to initiate intimacy, and I said no since I was not in the mood, understandably so. He got angry. He has never done this before. We have always had a very healthy, fulfilling sexual relationship. But now, he kept trying to convince me to have sex with him and asked me why I was putting my need over his. That I can just force myself to do it for the sake of our relationship. I said that I wasn't feeling well, I know I shouldn't even have to justify though. He said that even if I'm not feeling well, it's not an excuse. I was disgusted. I fell out of love that instant. I mean I was already in the process of it, but this really did it. I also felt very unsafe. I stood my ground, told him that this is not consensual and that someone's health is more important than his need for sex. I kept repeating it until he eventually stopped pushing, but he didn't leave my place until an hour later. I was afraid to anger him again by telling him to leave so I just stayed quiet doing stuff around the apartment until he decided to leave. Luckily, nothing happened to me but wow. I told my friends and family everything. They support me in my decision to break up and help me prepare my speech. I asked him to meet me in a public space the next day as one of the comments suggested. My friends were nearby keeping an eye. He was still angry at me because I haven't been talking to him and I refused sex. He asked me why I expect him to take care of me when I'm unwell, but I didn't give him sex yesterday. I decided to not waste my breath in explaining something so basic. I went on with my breakup speech as prepared where I told him everything, how disrespectful he's been, all the podcast stuff, etc. He suddenly looked so scared and begged me to take him back. He said he understands what I'm saying and that I'm right about the podcasts and that he will work on it. He was trying to convince me not to break up, but I did not believe anything he said. I held my ground and told him there is no room for discussion, it's over, and I left. Now I feel a weight lifted, but I am also heartbroken. I know this was the right thing to do. I just feel defeated. I wake up so anxious and feel like crying constantly. I am barely eating. I am seeing the therapist next week to help cope. If you guys have words of encouragement and maybe success stories of meeting your person, I'd love to hear. Thank you all sincerely. You all helped me in finding courage and strength in my time of need. Story 4. How can I, 28F, be more supportive to my partner, 28M? After sudden low libido, I've 28F been with my partner 28M for about six months now and there's been a sudden drop off with physical intimacy, but not romantic. Background. Both manage some depression slash anxiety and have a history of relationship trauma and sometimes have obstacles from that but overall I think we've gotten to a point where we are way more comfortable with vulnerability slash expressing needs. Miguel sometimes to get there we have to acknowledge triggers before we're communicating in discussion versus bickering. Overall, I feel a lot of growth with this person and have the intentions of evolving with them. We started with that hyper, honeymoon phase, where we were all over each other the first couple of weeks. It leveled out to something more realistic and the gestures stayed consistent, but for the last couple of months, my partner has not been interested in slash in the mood for sex. At first, this was being treated as an elephant in the room which made my frustration even more difficult. I'm also an anxious person so I had done myself the disservice of thinking maybe the attraction wasn't with me anymore. But when I asked directly I was told no and believe that. I feel bad about it because while it affects me, I don't want to make it about me, but more so of how I can help to get back to that point or avoid anything triggering. I tried to initiate again last night and when I got an uncomfortable laugh I asked about it directly. I don't ever have the intention of making my partner uncomfortable, but we weren't talking about it, and I just wanted to understand if there was something wrong. His initial reaction was to completely shut down. Once he started to open up it was a combination of stress slash self-image issues. I know he manages a lot of stress, but I had also started to notice some changes with him that made me fear there was a struggle with self-image. I'd say this discussion about it was more insightful than the last but I'm afraid I may have come off as nagging. 
I think one important note to add is he's been getting his space in order more slash getting back into hobbies and being more open with showing me things. I've loved watching this positive change in him, but it's also why I'm a little more confused for why this is happening. I just want advice on how I can help or give my partner a platform to express how they feel. We still snuggle slash go on dates slash flirt etc. But we used to always discuss how satisfied we were with our sex life. And now I don't know why he no longer sees it as relief slash fun. I told him if there needs to be a different approach to it then I'm willing to try. I just want to know his needs. What do you think could be a way I can express my desire without making him feel pressured? If possible, how do you think there could be compromise or a way to make progress? How can I make the discussion less uncomfortable? What approach should I take to ensure he has reassurance from me? I know that my sexual frustration doesn't trump his feelings and I would never push a partner to do anything they don't want. It just sucks because I'm very attracted to my partner and I do miss that compatibility we both used to really enjoy together. Thanks.